Hello everybody, this is another episode of Tom's Computer Channel and this is the third episode of the C64 series and this series is uh, to show you how you start with the C64 from scratch so if you have nothing on C64s before. So in the last two videos I showed you uh, how you can build a video cable and the power supply. My power supply was faulty and I don't had a video cable for C64 before. This C64G I will show you is um, the same type of C64 that I had back in the day. It's uh, almost over 20 years ago. Oh. And um, so yeah, we can take a closer look. So let's get started. So here we are on my workbench, and under this leather imitation vinyl dust cover it's pretty neat it came with this machine we have the c64g and as you can see on the twist c64g 15 watts 9 watt dc 5 volt ac and it's made in western germany it's a one with the bright keyboard and this G in this name stands for gaming is it was one of the last machines that built so I will show you it with the main board that in it. this machine is a PAL machine and was produced in 1988 in Western Germany and this it was the follower of the Aldi C64 this was sold before and uh, often this uh, computer was sold in a game bundle I had this game bundle back in the day there was a joystick and a cartridge in it it's called Super Game uh, but I have uh, not bought this with this machine that was not available with this machine and on this cartridge was uh, there are games like Colossus Chess, Silicon Cyborgs and International Football so we can see on the back there's a memory expansion port the uh, RF modulator in this case here um, you don't can see this on camera this uh, markings are not in the same position RF is here and RF should be here and HL is here and should be here the video port it's an 8 pin DIN connector and the serial port it's also a DIN connector it's a 6 pin DIN connector the cassette port, the user port and the expansion port in this expansion port you can put uh, cartridges in it so like game cartridges and the diagnostic cards on this side on the right side we have Two control ports for joysticks and mouse, the on off switch and the um, power connector. It's a 7 pin DIN connector. On the other side, we have nothing. If you see, it's in a good shape. It's not yellowed, it's uh, a little bit dirty. And on the other side, we have here some foot that's missing, this 
goes away. I put new one in it. And some scuff marks and scratches. So, that's it from the outside. The next thing we will look is from the inside. Let's go. So, to take a look on the inside, you have to twist the run. Remove three screws. I have to done before. Then you put it open. And here we have the keyboard cable. You unplug it and the connection for the power LED. And take it away and put it inside. And here we have a cardboard RF shield. We don't use this. We don't need this. Oh, it is inside. You see it's very good shape. No rust. No water markings. Nothing. Oh. If you can see in this C64 is in short board. It's a little bit dust fluffy here drin inside. And uh, this version is the 20, uh, 25, um, 250469 in revision 4. And we have uh, some uh, Moss IC branded chips drin inside. We uh, don't have the same chips inside like in, in older machines. In this case here is the MOS 8580 in revision 5. This is the SID chip in this. The, the VIC chip is this one. The 8565 in revision 2. And next we have the PLA in 25171501. This this one. In this PLA it's a difference to uh, older machines. There is a color RAM inside. The CP CPU inside this machine is the most 8500 and then we have um, the kernel and the basic ROM in one chip and this, this is the 25191301 and the character ROM in the 90122501 and we have, like other machines, uh, two CIA chips, the uh, MOS 6526, it's one here, one here. And in this build, we have, at first time, changed the electrolytic capacitors. And this one here, here, here are some, here is one, and this. But before we do this, we make a little test if this machines work. So it's all looked up. This is the power supply of the first series of this episode and the video cable of the second part. So I uh, put the link in the description and now we can test. If you see, the picture is good. We have a bright, clear picture. And uh, the characters are sharp. So it works. 
The next thing we have to do is recapping. So, all good on this side. So after the test of this uh, C64, we put out the PCB and clean the case. PCB is out. Now we can remove this cardboard shielding, take it away, we don't need this anymore. And if you see, the case is good, not very dirty, and the color of the case is also good. The top side. Let's take a look on the PCB. The PCB looks very good. No damages, no corrosion. Fine. And now, finally, we remove this keyboard. From the case. Yeah. The upper case is also good, no broken standoffs. No discoloration, less dirty. The LED is very tight fit in this. I will clean the case uh, carefully and let this in before it broke. And now we remove the keycaps to clean. For this I use this one, the keycap puller. It's very cheap but very useful. So, all keycaps are out. Let me take a brush. It's dusty. The dust are gone. Now we take some cleaner and the cloth. And 
give it a cold clean. Now the keyboard is clean and we put it on the side. Take a new box and put the springs in. The spring from the spacebar is a little bit different. You can see it here. It's a little bit higher and stronger. Metal parts we put also on the side. Short quick clean. We give the case two before. To see more cleaning is not necessary for the upper case. The lower case we make the same. For this part we use a magic eraser. Let's see look what's going on. The lower case is clean too. The only thing we have to wash in soapy water are the keycaps. If you can see the keys are in the sink. Now we put some water on it. Put a little bit of cleaner. And then we let this sit for a while. Now we're back on the bench 
and it's time to change the capacitors. We do this one by one so that we no nothing forgets and nothing mess up. First we apply fresh solder, that's the old solder gets better away.
Now the board is finished. We make some clean. And then we can test. We have success. Finished and now we are ready to test. And now we are here, you see, it's all connected. We uh, have to test after the work if we have this done right. Let's go. If you see, it works. Done. Now the key is soak for a while and let's make them a good clean. Now we let them dry and then we can reassemble the keyboard. So back on the workbench, the uh, keycaps are dry and now we start reassembling. First we screw in the main board. And now it's time for the keyboard.
one spring I have on the wrong place. Finished. The keyboard is done. Let's make this in the upper case. Put this on the side. Put the keyboard. Keyboard is complete, and now we put the case together. Then we can make the final test. So, last screws in. Here we are. Assembly done. It's all put together. It's all connected to the TV. Here's our C64. And now the final test. And it works. And the last thing we have to do is to put the feet under it. Oh, put some nice white rubber feet. Now it stands very stable. That's it. So, it's done. That's it for this episode. We have all cleaned and changed the capacitor, made function tests, and the full test with a diagnostic card. We uh, I want I won't make uh, in a future video. So uh, in the future video, I show you how to build one. Uh, this condition of the C64, you can use this. You, um, if you want to play, you can buy a cartridge with a game or a floppy drive and uh, floppies with games on it and a joystick to play. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. 
If you haven't subscribed to the video, please um, put the subscribe button if you won't miss any episode. So you can hit the bell icon directly uh, near from the subscribe button. And um, if you uh, haven't seen my other videos, check out my channel. So, and uh, I hope you, I see you in the next video. So, bye.